Hello everyone and welcome to this video on rule of inference. So in this video we want to show that t is a conclusion or that t is true from the following premises. And we have our four premises here in red. Now what we're going to do is we're going to build a valid argument which is a sequence of statements where each statement is either a premise or follows from previous statements called premises by rules of inference. And the last statement is called the conclusion. And to the right here, in the green rectangles, I have the rules that we are going to use. So these are our rules of inference. So let's go ahead and get started proving or showing that T is a conclusion from those premises. So the first thing I like to do is create two columns. So one column I will call step. And step will contain our statements. And then the other column I will call reason. And reason will show how I came to the conclusion of the statement. And I'm actually going to redraw that line here for step. Make it a little straighter. Okay. Well, that's just going to have to do for now. So let's start with step one. For step one, I will state that not P and Q is true. So where did I get this from? I got this from right there, from our premise. And reason... I will put from premise number one. Okay, so let's go to step two. In step two, I conclude that not P is true. So how did I come to this conclusion? Well, this was using, or this was by using the simplification rule on step number one. Okay? And if this is not immediately obvious to you, I will explain it now. So we do have our simplification rule right there. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to rewrite it down below. So we have P and Q, therefore P. And this is how you read it. If P and Q is true, then P is true. Okay? And also those three dots can also mean therefore. So you might hear it as then or therefore. Alright, so let me get rid of some of that information. Okay, and now we just have our simplification rule, like it's shown in the green rectangle above. So in step one, we have not P and Q Therefore, in step two, we got not P. And hopefully you can see the similarities between these two statements. Okay, so that's how I came to that conclusion in step two. So let me erase this. Now let's go to step number three. In step three, I will state that R implies P is true. And I get that from our premise right there. So in reason, I will write the same thing from premise number two. Okay. Now let's go to step number four, where I now can conclude that not R is true. So how did I do that? Well, I did that by using the modus Tolan's rule. OK, 
okay and I use that rule on step number two and step number three okay and again if this is not immediately obvious let me show you by rewriting the modus tollens rule so the modus tollens rule states that if not q is true and p implies q is true then not p is true and what we have in step number two is not p and what we have in step number three is r implies p therefore we conclude not r is true okay because we've already stated that not p is true and we've already shown that not p is true and we've shown that r implies p is true so we can conclude that not r is true all right so i'm going to erase that okay let's go to our next step step number five and in step number five I will state that not R implies S is true. And so I got that from our premise here. And so we're going to write the reasoning as well. So from premise number three. And then we're going to go to step number six. And in step number six, I can conclude that S is true. So I did this by using the modus ponens rule. And I use this rule on step number four and step number five. So if this is not immediately obvious, let me rewrite the modus ponens rule. So modus ponens rule states that if P is true and P implies Q is true, then Q is true. And what we have in step four is not R. And what we have in step number five is not R implies S, therefore we conclude S. So again, I hope you see the similarities here. Okay. Now let's go to step seven. And in step seven, I will state that S implies T is true. That's from our premise there. So let's write that from premise number four. And then we can go to step eight, where we now know that T is true. And we know this using the modus ponens rule. And we're using this rule on step number six and step number seven. Okay. So I will rewrite that modus ponens rule, which states that if P is true and P implies Q is true, then Q is true. Let me write that a little bit better. If P is true and P implies Q is true, then Q is true. Okay. And what we have in step number six is S. So we already stated that S is true. And what we have in step number seven is S implies T is true. Therefore, we can conclude that T is also true. And again, I hope you see the similarities. All right. Now, what we could have done is we could have used a truth table to, to show that T is a conclusion, 
but uh, we did not use a truth table to show that T is a conclusion because it would have taken about 32 rows on that truth table, while here we were able to do this in only 8 steps using these rules. So anyways, I hope you all enjoyed this video. That's pretty much it. Uh, please leave any questions you have in the comment section. Uh, please become a subscriber to my YouTube channel and hit that like button if you enjoyed the video. And also, if you found this video helpful, please share it. Maybe others will find it helpful as well. And as always, thank you all for watching my videos on logic and proofs, mathematics, computer science, all these different type of topics. I really uh, appreciate it. And as always, I'll see you all in the next video.